Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. First headline, Bitcoin hash rate is moving out of China in a big way. According to data from the block, Bitcoin's hash rate crashed nearly 50% over the last month, coinciding with multiple regions in China moving to shut down Bitcoin mining. Notably, Xinjiang and Sichuan, the top the two top Bitcoin mining regions in China, cut the proverbial mining cord, taking an estimated 30% of the network's hash rate offline. China's decision to shut down Bitcoin mining has kickstarted a hash rate migration, with Chinese miners seeking to move Bitcoin mining equipment to more friendly jurisdictions. On Tuesday, a Chinese logistics firm decided to ship 6,600 pounds of mining equipment to Maryland, first reported by CNBC's Eunice Yoon. Thomas Heller, chief business officer at Compass Mining, told Coindesk, 3,000 kilograms sounds huge, but compared to the amount of miners that get shipped regularly, it's just a small batch. The secondary market for Bitcoin mining equipment appears to be flooded. Kevin Zhang, vice president of Foundry, reported that a colleague based in China has already, quote, shipped out over 20,000 ASICs in the last two weeks, adding that the great ASIC exodus will be anything but seamless. Hosting capacity outside China was already oversubscribed and scarce prior to these regulatory announcements. Already, the implications of the minor exodus from China are being felt. On Monday, Bitcoin mining machine manufacturer Kanan said in a press release that its Avalon miner unit is already in operation in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a country worth keeping an eye on as the mining haven competition heats up due to its proximity to China and cheap electricity rates. Following Kevin Zhang's logic about the possible oversupply of mining equipment, Bitmain announced the suspension of Bitcoin mining rig sales. Bloomberg reports that the price tag for a top-tier rig has fallen 75% since April. The block's data shows that Foundry, a subsidiary of Digital Currency Group, saw the hash rate of its mining pool, Foundry USA, increase nearly 15% over the past month, shooting into the top 10 of mining pools worldwide. Other top pools, such as Ant Pool and F2 Pool, saw hash rate decrease 50% during the same period. Speaking of China, China bans crypto for the fourth time. The People's Bank of China released a statement on Monday that not only reiterated previous crypto bans, but additionally asked Chinese exchanges to investigate, identify, and cut off any user accounts associated with over-the-counter crypto exchanges. The block reports that four institutions, including Alipay, issued a similar notice warning that any users found dealing in crypto transactions would see their account terminated and reported to the relevant authorities. The PBOC's words follow a similar May notice from three Chinese self-regulatory bodies reiterating the 2013 and 2017 crypto bans on Bitcoin transactions and ICOs, making this week the fourth time China has banned cryptocurrency. Next headline. Citigroup launches a cryptocurrency business unit. On Thursday, Citigroup officially announced the Digital Assets Group, its new business unit within its wealth management division, dedicated to the cryptocurrency and blockchain space, as reported by The Block. The move comes after Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs launched their own crypto initiatives for wealthy clients to gain exposure to cryptocurrencies. Next headline, MicroStrategy Bonds Trading Below Face Value. On Monday, MicroStrategy announced the purchase of an additional 13,005 Bitcoin for roughly $489 million in cash, which equates to approximately $37,600 per Bitcoin. The latest Bitcoin acquisition comes shortly after the company completed its $500 million offering of secured notes last week. On Tuesday, Coindesk reported those notes, which come due in 2028 and bear an annual interest rate of 6.125%, we're trading at 97.75 cents on the dollar, meaning the bonds traded below face value. The latest purchase pushes, pushes MicroStrategy's overall investment in Bitcoin to over $2.7 billion in cash, equating to an aggregate holding of 105,085 Bitcoin on the software company's balance sheet. While MicroStrategy continues to go all in on its Bitcoin accumulation strategy, Frank Shaparo, director of news at The Block, published an article that paints a dire picture for those waiting for other public corporations to join the ranks of hodlers. One major obstacle to actual adoption is how Bitcoin is accounted for. One source vented to Frank, quote, accounting is fucking brutal. No real company can take the generally accepted accounting principles earnings per share hit. The crux of the issue, notes Deloitte's Rob Macy, is that, quote, 
Each quarterly reporting period effectively looks at the lowest price that Bitcoin has ever traded at since its purchase and requires a write down. For now, it appears that outside of Tesla, Square, and the few public corporations that have already purchased Bitcoin, the demand is just not there. Or, as an anonymous source from a crypto firm specializing in institutional customers put it, quote, new net long positions from corporates outside of microstrategy are essentially non-existent. Next headline. Crypto fundraising didn't slow, even as Bitcoin dipped below $30,000. Earlier this week, Bloomberg reported the venture capital raises that venture capital firms had invested $17 billion into the crypto industry this year, doubling the previous yearly record of $7.4 billion in 2018. And that $17 billion all came within the first six months of the year. The trend continues this week with several high-profile raises. Andreessen Horowitz launched a new $2.2 billion crypto fund with plans to invest in a slew of companies across the blockchain and digital asset space. A16Z also announced that former Securities and Exchange Commission Director Bill Hinman will join the firm as an advisory partner. Chainalysis, a blockchain analytics firm, brought home $100 million in a Series E funding round that valued the company at $4.2 billion, doubling its valuation in about three months. Co2 led the latest round. Amber Group, a crypto financial services company, raised $100 million at a valuation of $1 billion, in a Series B read, led by China at Renaissance. Michael Wu, the CEO at Amber, boasted, quote, Cumulative trading on the platform has already doubled since the beginning of the year, increasing from $250 million to $500 million. Blockchain Capital announced it had closed a new fund of $300 million and an oversubscribed raise that included, quote, strategic investors, pension funds, major university endowments, and family offices from around the world. Most notable amongst those are PayPal and Visa. Next headline, John McAfee found dead in prison days before U.S. extradition. On Wednesday, John McAfee, the controversial software magnate, was found dead in his prison cell near Barcelona. The Catalan Department of Justice said, quote, everything indicates that it could be a death by suicide. McAfee was awaiting extradition to the U.S., which that Spanish high court had authorized earlier that day. McAfee had been detained in Spain last year on tax evasion charges. In March, McAfee was indicted on several charges of money laundering and fraud revolving around an alleged pump and dump scheme and multiple ICOs. U.S. attorneys say McAfee and his team would purchase altcoins, promote them on Twitter, and then sell them once they had boosted the price. He also allegedly promoted ICOs without disclosing he was paid to do so. Next headline, Crypto Crime blockchain island, and 69,000 missing Bitcoin. The Times of Malta published a claim that estimates nearly $70 billion in cryptocurrency moved through the island when it first introduced its crypto-friendly strategy in 2017. One such method, a transitory period, gave crypto startups and major exchanges like Binance permission to operate without a license for up to a year, quickly turning the country into the Wild West, as an industry source put it. According to the Times sources, quote, Malta's act-fast approach to attracting digital currency platforms to the island before the necessary laws were in place was among the red flags facing the country. The news comes as evaluators from the Financial Action Task Force are considering placing Malta on its gray list of countries who are not doing enough to prevent financial crime. According to a Bloomberg report, two brothers who founded AfriCrypt, a South African crypto exchange, have disappeared, taking up to 69,000 Bitcoin worth about $2.3 billion with them. Afrocrypt shut down in April, coinciding with Bitcoin's $64,000 all-time high, with the company citing a breach in its system. Soon after the supposed breach, the brothers, Raiz and Amir Keiji, allegedly transferred their investors' money from company accounts through crypto mixing services. Time for fun bits. McDonald's and the market dip. With the latest drop in the crypto markets, as I discussed with Will, it looks like a few of our favorite crypto people might have to take some new jobs. For those of you listening on audio, my favorite meme on Twitter this week was when several of them posted about their new McDonald's side hustle as Bitcoin dipped below 30K. Frank Chaparro posted a selfie in a McDonald's hat, and it looked shockingly legit and <laughs> worn in. And he tweeted that he has some personal news to share with his followers insinuating he's left the pen to pick up a spatula. 
Another McDonald's meme that made me laugh was Ryan Watkins' tweet depicting Michael Saylor wearing Mickey D's attire, addressing uh, <laughs> an imaginary customer saying, Bitcoin is a swarm of cyber hornets serving the goddess of wisdom, feeding on the fire of truth, exponentially growing ever smarter, faster, and stronger behind a wall of encrypted energy. And the customer replying, right, can I get a Big Mac with fries? All right, thanks for tuning in. To learn more about Will and his BTC by WC3 substack, be sure to check out the links in the show notes. It's up, everyone. The Unchained newsletter has switched from a weekly news recap to a daily blog in order to keep up with the crazy pace of crypto news. Each morning, you'll get four to five quick headlines, a crypto meme or two, and a few recommended reads. Head to unchainedpodcast.com and the sign up for the email newsletter is right on the homepage. You can also find the link in my Twitter bio. Unconfirmed is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Mark Murdoch, and Daniel Ness. Thanks for listening.